Just about the only thing dry here at AT&T Park is us. Jason Wagon and Jim Holly, the camera we're looking into right now is soaked. So is the racetrack. So are the people working in the racetrack. So are 37,200 fans who still came here and jammed this place despite the rain that we feared would come coming. Jim, it was a mud race. Yeah, it was. I mean, especially, uh, you know, we, we knew that going in. They cut the laps down in the lights to 10, 10 laps. And in the Supercross class, 15. <laughs> and uh, you know what? The heat races were good. The last chances were good. Got down to the main events and it started to rain a little bit harder in that Supercross, a uh, little bit lighter in the lights appropriately, uh, the rain coming down. I and mean, uh, Jason Lawrence finally gets the monkey off his back. Now, I know the boys from New Jersey can ride in mud, but I think for Lawrence, it's not just about finally winning a race. Uh, muddy or not, doesn't really matter. He finally got a win, and that's what counts. Well, and I, I think it's also good for the team. I mean, you know, the team I know has been working really hard. Chris McAvoy over there is mechanic. Uh, Corey, uh, the engine guy, Keith. I know uh, Nagi, uh, Nagatoshi Chiba from Japan helping him out over there, and all the mechanics involved, the truck driver. You know, I, I think that was a team win for Jason Lawrence, and I think that uh, he knows going down to Anaheim Anaheim next weekend in Anaheim 3 that he's got a legit shot at, at trying to string together two in a row here and with Dungey finishing up seventh he gained some points. Yeah he did. Now Brock Hepler was second in points coming into this one and he struggled big time crashing the first turn also crashing his heat race had to go to the LCQ he finished even behind Dungey so we might be back to a two horse race between Lawrence and uh, Dungey but you never know in the lights class. No you, you never know and it, it's just uh, that's the way that uh, it is and I mean that's the why, why it's so exciting to go out there and watch but uh, how about Tommy Hahn on the motorsport uh, team Kawasaki Extreme. Uh, he comes away with a second place finish. He rode really well, as well as um, Brett Metcalf also. Two Kawasaki's on the podium. I know, but Brett, how many fingers am I holding up? He missed. He thought the white flag was the checkered flag, and he pulled off the side of the track and gave second place over to Han. Well, at least it's second place and it's not first. I remember yeah. when Kevin Windham oh, did it in yeah. Washougal. I mean, you know, if you're leading a thing and you hand it over, especially he has never won a Supercross. So if he's leading his Supercross and he hands it over when he's uh, leading the race. But, you know, second's okay. He still made it on the box and the podium. And uh, things like that happen when you're racing. You're just caught up in the moment and uh, you just get so excited. You, you think that, wow, that's it, you know. And I don't know. He couldn't have been tired. It was only 10 laps. <laughs> oh, no, no. He proved the Australians can ride in the mud. And so did the guy that won the Supercross class main tonight. Chad Reed has had a lot of bad races in the mud. He maintains that he likes riding in the mud and thinks he can ride in it well. And finally, he proved it with a great ride tonight. Yeah, I think Chad tonight was patient out there. You know, he didn't get the start that he wanted. Uh, the, the start went, the whole shot went to Timmy Ferry. Uh, believe it or not, Timmy uh, Ferry comes away with $1,500 from Progressive. But uh, Chad Reed was buried back in about eighth position, seventh. You know, he just kind of was patient. And uh, things happened up in the front. Guys went off the course. Uh, you know, uh, when we talked to in the, uh, the the post show, uh, you know, I said it was handed to you, but you know, it wasn't handed to him. I mean, you still got to go out there and ride with it. And Chad Reed could have handed it to somebody else just as easily. Right. Chad was smooth tonight. Uh, he rode really well, and uh, hey, he strung together uh, two in a row now, and uh, we'll see what happens if anyone else can challenge him. But I think if anyone can, it would be Kevin Windham and Davey Millsaps. I mean, Davey Millsaps rode really well tonight and thought for sure he'd come away with the, his first win of his career. But uh, unfortunately, he likes those tough blocks a little bit more than uh, crossing the checkered flag first. But uh, just it, I think it was a great night for everybody. I mean, uh, nobody got hurt. And how about Jacob Marsak, fourth yeah. place, top privateer. I mean, you know, his dad, Jim, uh, you know, I, I showed you on the phone. We even got a phone call from him. You know, the, my phone was off during the broadcast. But, uh, you know, I'm sure people that were listening in his hometown and, uh, you know, we were giving him some love because he deservedly uh, deserved it. I mean, those guys are genuine people. I mean, you think we're going to get a call from Chad Reed or anybody else we give love to? I mean, Jim Marsak gave us a call on the cell phone tonight. And, uh, you know, my hat's off to... Uh, to Jacob Marsak, uh, those guys work hard, and it's it's nice to see uh, them rewarded with a fourth place finish tonight. What was cool is that his dad Jim said uh, he left the voicemail, and then he said, "I gotta go because we're going to tech inspection." Right. I can't believe we get to go to tech inspection because they made the top ten. So we're definitely proud of the privateer. That is indeed mud being the great equalizer. And uh, I know there's been a lot of rain in the California, up here, up north, down there, down south. But I'm assuming we'll have better track conditions next week at Anaheim Three. But well, Maybe not. You, you never know. I yeah. mean, uh, let's hopefully, uh, you know, we have it like it was uh, for Retro Night last weekend in Anaheim, too. I mean, that was perfect conditions. I mean, uh, and, you know, when you have conditions uh, like that, the fans are the ones that benefit from it because of the fact that they can come out and experience all the things that we have to offer in the pits. And, uh, you know, my hat's off to the fans in San Francisco. They stuck with it, all 37,000-plus that you said. You know, that main event, it came raining. 
they said, you know what, if the riders are out there, we're staying here, we're going to see a great main event. Yeah, it's awesome. They're dedicated, and uh, if you're a fan, you can watch it on HD on CBS tomorrow, 9 a.m. Pacific and noon Eastern time. That's uh, HD. That's the first time I got to see it in HD because we had a TV right in front of us. It looks awesome, especially in a mud race like this, so don't miss it. And we'll be back, of course, right here at supercrossonline.com next weekend from Anaheim. Jim? Good show tonight, man. Everybody had to persevere except uh, us because we were dry all day. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, you know, it's uh, you always talk about the mud races and, uh, you know, also the guys that I feel for, the mechanics mm -hmm. and the truck drivers that got to clean everything and get it all ready for next weekend. It's not like they have two weeks to prepare for the next race. They have six days, and they're back at Anaheim again. Yeah, and they'll be back. The uh, circus continues to roll. We'll be in Anaheim next weekend. So join us on supercrossonline.com, and make sure you watch the CBS broadcast tomorrow. Thanks for watching.